can say anything. You know, <laughs> whatever you legendary, you need to be old. But I've been at this for a long time. I have been coaching swimming and uh, triathlon for a long time. And a little bit about myself <coughs> is uh, my wife and I, Laura, just moved out here about eight years ago from New Jersey. And uh, you probably can guess by my uh, the tone of my voice, I'm definitely from the Midwest, the way I have this nice accent. So, But needless to say, uh, I've been coaching for 20 years. And there's two things that I work on specifically when I'm working with athletes. Number one, feel. I need my athletes to make a kinesthetic awareness of what their bodies are doing in the water. Are you feeling that? Not go back to the wall. We'll do it again. We'll do it again, do it again, do it again. And that, uh, that is a, a, a strategy I've used working with age groupers to the pros that I work with and Kona qualifiers. The only way you're going to get better at swimming is through the biomechanics of swimming and a feel for what the body is doing in the water at all times. And, we'll get, and, and listen, at any time, please feel free to ask a question, all right? A little bit about myself and some of my credentials and certifications. I am an ASCA Level 3 certified swim coach. That's the American Swim Coaches Association. I am a USAT Level 1 tri coach, a, uh, a AFPA coach with a uh, personal training, a uh, US Master Swim coach, a USA Cycling Level 3 certified coach, and I am a CrossFit Level 1 certified trainer. Uh, why CrossFit, people ask me? Because there seems to be this wonderful relationship between triathletes and CrossFit. I probably was maybe one of a handful of people who noticed this walking around at SOMA this year and Ironman in the transition area and watching how so many people were standing in that transition area with CrossFit t-shirts. CrossFitters are now getting intrigued with the idea of doing triathlon. All right, I can throw a 55 pound kettlebell around. Can I swim 2.4 miles? And they're finding out that it's not the same. So. Um, I always tell triathletes who are getting into CrossFit, this is great information to start off with. Remember, you're a triathlete doing CrossFit, you're not a CrossFit doing triathlon. Because they're different animals. Uh, defining the process of swimming. This is it for me guys, the process of getting from point A to point B in the most efficient and effective manner as possible by simply minimizing drag and resistance and maximizing body position, balance, breathing, and propulsion. Have I missed anything? I don't think I have, all right? We see in maximizing body position and balance, what's been real, real famous is a lot of athletes doing total immersion. They do a phenomenal job of teaching balance and body position. They also touch on the breathing aspect where they don't spend a lot of quality time and where a lot of athletes lose it is in the propulsion piece. I get a lot of athletes come to me going, I've done three, four Ironmans, I can't finish it 142 anymore as my fast time. I can't. So tell me where your swimming background is. Well, I take a total immersion class one time. Great start. It is a wonderful start. It does teach these critical aspects. But this is where I spend a lot of time with athletes. It's now time to get you faster. Again, defining the process of swimming, just to reiterate, minimizing drag and resistance. I'm going to stand in the back here so I'm out of the way a little bit. But minimizing drag and resistance, okay? Balance, body in a diagonal position. I'm going to go over all this. Body, body positioning in general, legs, the kick, head position. I literally just posted an article on my Facebook this morning in regards to head position. This guy, this uh, gentleman, Patrick Large, sent me a, uh, uh, a response to that Facebook saying, what a great timely article because I was dealing with having my head up too high. You cannot begin how those little things, what I refer to are the, the one percenters. They all add up really, really quick and create lots of problems for swimmers. So if I minimize these things, I'm starting to maximize how quickly I, can I catch the water, what's going on in my front quadrant, and what's going on in my rear quadrant. In the world of swimming, from here to here is the front quadrant, right to the sternum, 
from the sternum back is the rear part. So if you're reading an art article and saying, you know, through the catch, you need to make sure you're doing this, yada, 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 through the back quadrant, you're going to understand what this means. Excuse me. Here we go. The swim self. I developed this because basically each and every one of you have the ability to become an ultimate swimmer. An ultimate swimmer means, what am I capable of doing? Do I have the necessary strength, number one? Do I have balance and body position, number two? Do I have the necessary flexibility, and do I have the necessary propulsion? If I incorporate those four elements, my swim self starts to elevate. I become better at swimming. You cannot ignore any one of these four elements. You must have them all. Okay? I've seen people, again, who go through that slide and glide swim, that long stroke, that catch-up style, they rotate to the other side. Great balance and body position. But where's the propulsion? Okay? Where's the propulsion? If I don't have the strength and the flexibility, I'm never going to get the propulsion. Does that make sense? Okay? So when I coach the swimmer, I coach the entire swimmer. One of the first things I start to check on, do they have flexibility? Is the strength there in order to give them the necessary propulsion? A little bit of a, you, you, I'm sure many of you already know this, Triathletes were notorious for this. Coach writes out a workout, wow, 3,000 meters swim. If I swim 4,000 meters, that's got to be a lot better. It's got to be better. So we, we report back to coach, we did 3,000 meters. We slipped that 1,000 meters under, under, under the rope. We don't talk to them about that. More is not necessarily better. We talk about the entire quality to get to our swim self. I can show you athlete after athlete, 15,000, 20,000 meters a week, and they are no faster this year than they were last year. Quick story, Ironman Arizona. Had an athlete, five Ironmans in a row. Five Ironmans in a row. Came to me uh, about four or five months prior to Ironman. We were gonna work together we were going to address all four of these elements and for a number of reasons couldn't stay with me because he got sick and then had to move on but the reality is Iron Man number one he did in Arizona 117 second one 116 third one 118 fourth one 117 what do you think he did this year in Arizona this year's time anybody want to take a wild guess 117 and change Einstein made the line famous, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So I get to show athletes through this, this creating this swim self, the balance of all four of these. I gotta learn how to use this thing. <laughs> okay. The importance of technique, again, just again, I'm, I'm, I'm big on reiterating, maximizing technique and mechanic. We minimize drag and resistance, okay? Head, feet, and frontal drag. I'm going to get into that right now. Poor, poor balance, <coughs> missed catch. Does any of this sound familiar to you, a lot of you guys? You've heard and seen these terms before. Um, upward glide, straight arm recovery, crossover, over rotation when taking a breath. Can somebody tell me what is the ultimate body rotation? What is the degree of rotation that we should be doing as triathletes? And I'm assuming everyone in here is a triathlete. Um, the rotation. Anybody, anybody want to take a wild guess? 45 degrees. Okay? 45 degrees. We do not swim like fish. We don't roll completely on our side. Okay? We don't do that. 45 degrees. Um, anybody who's ever trained with me, and I put my legendary TikTok belt on them, they know exactly what I'm referring to. Finise comes up with a great uh, design belt. It's got a tube in the back. 
Each side of the tube is elevated 45 degrees. When you rotate, the, the ball clicks. Some people say, well, I, I hear heavy click to this side. I don't hear too much to the right side. Guess what? Asymmetry issues. We need clean rotation of the body. So we work on all of that. More common challenges. Head position, high head. As I, I refer to it, I'm, I'm, Patrick, I'm not picking on you. I put this great article from Gary Hall Sr. He talks about head position. Head led swimming, head led swimming, right? Your head is too high, hips start to drop. Patrick sends back a response to me, he said, this was the timely article. I was swimming today, I knew my head was too high. That's where kinesthetic awareness comes in. Frank talked to me about head, or my coach talked to me about my head position. I need to know that I've got to drop it down a little bit. It creates a ton, a ton of uh, resistance. Overreaching, a ton of resistance. Dropped elbows, we lose any ability to catch water. Okay? Now, this whole conversation about dropped elbows, to some people, is the most confusing thing in the world. When I talk to athletes about, you need your elbows higher. Well, what do you mean about higher? What, what, what does that mean? Okay? This is what I see common all day long with swimmers. And I work with up to seven athletes six days a week. And this is what I say. Hand drives into the water. Let me show from this side. Hand will drive into the water. And they simply press down on the water. Dropped elbow. Dropped elbow. If we had the hand of a clock, the face of a clock here, 12, 6, 3, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They're not going anywhere. You're not making connection with the water. Dropped elbows, okay? There are some coaches will go very extreme. They want their athletes, elbows, one inch above the surface of the water. You know what, we go back to that other slide, you know what kind of flexibility you would need? You need to be like Gumby. I'd crack like a pretzel stick. <laughs> but that is where the rubber hits the road. Getting the necessary flexibility to get that high elbow and what is known as early vertical catch. Early vertical catch. Okay? My athletes will always know as soon as they come into my, uh, to my studio and we're going to do any work, one of the very, very first things they'll do is they'll grab the bands. We'll swim 10, 15 minutes with the bands prior to actually getting into the water. I am trying to create that necessary muscle memory. Good sir, could you stand up please for me? And your name is? JP. JP, could you hold that in there for me? JP is going to be simulating a, a rod or a pole that, that's on, and all I have athletes do for 10 minutes is do this, right through the scapula. Rotation, medial rotation of the scapula. They come back this far, and that's it. For 10 minutes. Over kicking. I'm not going fast enough. I gotta use some more legs. <laughs> gotta use the legs. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. If you are doing an Olympic distance, let me back up. If you're doing an Ironman to half Ironman distance and you are over kicking and you constantly hear for the first five miles on the bike, you know where I'm going with this, coming left, <laughs> first five miles at a transition, you can bet you have used way too much of your energy out in that lake, river, or ocean. Something needs to be modified. This is one of the very first places I go. I see it all the time. They read, they, they go to Facebook, they go to YouTube, and somebody says, well, you gotta elevate your, you gotta elevate your hips. Kick harder. So you do exactly that. And you are going to be absolutely exhausted. Just stand there, if you're not doing the try, just stand there and watch some poor souls as they are struggling to get out of that water. It's exhausting. I get tired watching sometimes. Overkicking is, is just the, one of the worst things I've seen. Swimming flat, shoulders and hips, 
poor timing. Swimming flat, we got into what Valerie had indicated, a 45 degree rotation, a stacking of the body, trying to minimize the amount of body pressing down on the water. This swimming flat creates a ton of drag and resistance. Okay? Shoulders and hips, we talk about shoulders and hips in this respect. If I was training you to be a sprinter, if you came to me and said, I want to do a U.S. swim meet and I want to swim the 50 freestyle, I wouldn't really care about your hip rotation. Okay? It should be shoulder driven because there's three types of swimmers, actually four types of swimmers. Either you're a shoulder driven swimmer, you're a hip driven swimmer, you're a hybrid, meaning you're using both, or you're a gallop swimmer. Okay? And a gallop swimmer are very unique. They come from swimming background. Generally speaking, they have this tendency to swim pull glide, pull glide, pull glide, pull glide. So they incorporate some of the hip, but not enough. In the world of triathlon, in the world we come from, we want to make sure that in most respects, I turn most of my swimmers into hybrids. I want those shoulders to get around, and those hips to get around the same, same angle. We don't want shoulders this way and hips this way. Again, drag and resistance. Drag and resistance. Any questions at this time? At this time? Poor timing. Had a young lady in the water the other day. It took me like 30 seconds to even try to demonstrate what she was doing. She's coming here to rotate Instead of, instead of getting her head out of the water here, as her hand's coming out of the water, she's turning her head to, to uh, take her breath. I, I mean, it, it was the hardest thing in the world for me to, even, to mimic. So it's just it's kind of here versus as I'm going through the stroke, this rotation, nice, easy rotation of my head. So timing, poor timing, creates dropped elbows, over kicking, swimming flat. Okay? Poor timing also... If I have seen this, I see it every single, with even some of the pros I work with, as they're swimming along. If you have poor balance, you are rotating to the left to take a breath. This hand is pressing down on the water. Elbow is here, so when you come back flat, where are you starting your stroke? Right here. So how are you going to get any propulsion? Right? Here, hands will stay anchored out in front. We catch water and rotate through. For more, for many triathletes, the swim discipline is a test of survival of the fittest. We know that. We've seen it. We've all been there before. It is this, this, uh, this, this. Hell or high water, I'm getting through this swim. I've seen it countless times. And you know what? I, somewhere I read on Swiss, you know, this is the conversation you, you, you hear. Somewhere I read on Fast Twitch is, don't worry about your swim, this, this coach, guru guy. I don't know who it was. But he said, you know what, don't worry about your swim because it's really only a very short portion of the triathlon. So why would you want to put all that time in it? Go spend time on the bike. See, the advent of the internet, you can find anybody who agrees with what you said. I get people doing it all the time. True story. Swimmer says, I, I found a coach that says I could put my thumb in the water first. Really? That's great. Great. You'll always find somebody who's going to agree with you. Okay? But what I'm saying to you is that what you're trying to do is follow the philosophies of most coaches. The ones I like to follow, Gary Hall Sr. Um, uh, he, he, to me, is absolutely brilliant. There's um, a couple, other, uh, couple others that elude me right now, but I'll, I'll give you some other uh, uh, insight into other coaches or websites to go to. Faster should not be the focus, but swimming easier and speed will always be a byproduct of improved technique. Uh, CrossFit, endurance, becoming real, real big. Pay attention to it. There's a, every year after Ironman, there's an article that comes out in one of the major magazines, how I finished Ironman in under 10 hours with nine hours of training a week. And it always goes back to that CrossFit mentality high intensity, short duration workout. And what they preach is what I agree, is what I've been coaching for years, you must learn technique first, then you incorporate speed, and then you incorporate distance. 
Speed, speed, speed. I got an athlete. When I first started training her last year, I was training her for a 12 and a half mile ocean swim. The woman loves to swim long. She wanted to wring my neck when I gave her 30 50s on a minute flat. What do I need this for? I'm swimming 12 and a half miles. <laughs> but she understood when she went out there the necessity for the speed to prepare the body to swim long. Best strategy is to exit the water with a low heart rate. This is something I counsel on my triathlon.